WCBI News at 10 starts now. Thanks for staying up with us tonight. Election Day is less than six months away, and with fears of the coronavirus pandemic and social distancing guidelines in place, many are wondering what voting is going to look like this year. As Courtney Ann Jackson tells us, the Secretary of State's office is working on a plan. Think about all the things you touch when you go to your polling place on Election Day. It's enough to give pause to the state's election officials who are working through a plan in case COVID-19 is still a concern come November. So we didn't want to overreact. We wanted to make sure that we were focusing on Election Day and making them feel safe. There are a couple of changes you may see by November. Obviously, uh, the poll workers there are going to have PPE. Uh, we're going to have sanitation uh, stations set up for that. We're going to be providing that for all of our counties. The state is exploring options of moving all counties to paper ballots, but in the event that it doesn't happen by November. We asked one of our vendors last week, as simple as something as a popsicle stick uh, or a stylus, something that we can give the voters so they're not continually touching the machines. Secretary of State is also asking the legislature to change the law as it relates to in-person only absentee voting during a state of emergency. We'll take the pressure off Election Day, uh, so it will we'll decrease the size of groups that are going to the precincts. Senator David Blunt serves on the Senate Election Committee and has long advocated for election reforms in the state. I personally think we should have early voting for everybody. I think voters demand it. Most states have it. People want the convenience of it. But I would say in Mississippi, in a pandemic year, every voter should be able to use the existing absentee process, and that includes in person, but it also includes mail. And we've got a process that's already in the law to do that. And then when the uh, pandemic's over, we go back to normal, then we can have a different conversation. Watson, though, says he has too many concerns to move to a vote by mail system, even during this crisis. And talk about some of the, the complexities of vote by mail. Number one, the first thing that, and I can't get past this piece, you look at our, our voter rolls. Are they clean? Are they correct? Until you get those voter rolls cleaned up, I don't think you can even start the conversation about vote by mail. So Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. The Secretary of State's office says it will be sending out information to keep voters informed of any changes ahead of Election Day. Hundreds of millions of dollars in unemployment benefits meant for American workers who have lost their jobs during the COVID-19 pandemic are going overseas. CBS's Jeff Begays has more on how an international crime ring is crashing in or cashing in rather on the hard times here at home. When Stephanie Dercole applied for unemployment in Florida on April 13th, this pop-up appeared on the government website saying this social security number was already used to file a claim. I've never uh, filed for unemployment before, so I was thinking, okay, maybe someone did fraudulently use my social to try and claim benefits as me. CBS News has confirmed that the Secret Service is investigating a multi-million dollar fraud scheme led by a criminal organization with ties to Nigeria, targeting the unemployment insurance system. We will track down every lead we have and prosecute those that we can. According to the Secret Service alert, there are cases in Washington State, Florida, North Carolina, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Oklahoma, and Wyoming. They just saw the opportunity and seized that opportunity. Victims like Stephanie Dercole are struggling with unemployment and now this. Okay, so you're in a real limbo. Yes. Don't know if you're going to get your money. Don't know if somebody stole your money. Right. <laughs> I, I basically resigned to the fact that I may never see any of this money, which is sad. The Secret Service believes the thieves are trying to capitalize on states rushing money to people in need during this pandemic. And even though this investigation is really just ramping up, the potential losses here could reach hundreds of millions of dollars. Jeff Begay's CBS News, Washington. We are now roughly three months away from the start of the fall semester at area colleges and universities, and many are still waiting to find out what the college experience will look like on campus or online. Our Quentin Smith speaks with a community college and university about the impact the pandemic could have on student enrollment. In 2019, the Mississippi University for Women saw a roughly 3.8% increase in enrollment. And that brings the total to over 2,800 students. Now, university leaders are hoping that number will remain the same for the upcoming fall semester, despite this global pandemic. 
Of course, we want to remain optimistic that uh, student enrollment will either uh, remain the same or even increase, but it's way too early in the game to tell. Dwight Doty works in the admissions office at MUW and says while they're uncertain about fall enrollment numbers, one thing that is certain is the fact that they're seeing a high volume of students filling out online applications to enroll. Despite the pandemic, I believe that students are still interested in achieving their academic goals. Doty says they're preparing themselves as if students will return to campus. That's why the university is using innovative ways such as virtual tours, online orientation, and webinars to help them connect with prospective students. These methods have allowed us to keep students engaged for the days and weeks of co to come leading up to registration um, and classes starting. So we have a phrase that we've started called the W Anywhere. Uh, we These innovations have allowed us to uh, make the W accessible no matter where students are. But universities aren't the only ones faced with enrollment challenges. East Mississippi Community College President Dr. Scott Also Brooks says he expects enrollment to take a slight dip when the fall semester begins. I think there's a lot of uncertainty a lot of people might fear getting back into the classroom. Dr. Also Brooks says they're offering both online and face-to-face -face classes this fall, and students can choose whichever option fits them best. Tuition at a community college is already much cheaper than a university. So even if it's a university student that might be you know, a little fearful of going back to a university campus, they can roll with us online, get the same type of courses and save themselves some money, transfer those courses back to the university. While enrollment is expected to be down early on, also Brooks says that number could soon quickly surge as people look to develop or find a new skill to help them get back into the labor market. We're going to have those offerings out there for those students that might want to, or, or those people that might be displaced in the labor market that want to, you know, find their way to the Yokohamas or the, the PACA or some of these great companies that's been recruited to this area by the link. We want to help them solve their, their human resource issues and keep them at full employment. So we're going to have classes. MUW has created a task force to decide when students will be able to return to campus at EMCC. Dr. Also Brooks says they are waiving all ACT requirements and current students will not have to pay off their current bill to enroll for the upcoming semester. We had a pretty nice Monday afternoon, a bit of a gloomy start today, but this afternoon and this evening, pretty nice. Our Tupelo time lapse, and you can see the sun reflecting off the Bancorp South building there in downtown Tupelo as the sun was going on down. A chance for some scattered clouds out there tonight. Overall quiet, no rain expected here for tonight. Lows down into the 50s. We have current temperatures in the 60s, so we'll get down into the 50s tonight. Tomorrow, unusually cool for this time of year. Low and mid 70s around here. There may be a few showers as well. But we'll take the drop in humidity and the drop in temperatures considering where we're headed towards the holiday weekend. But as you can see, there could be a few showers out there. We'll talk more about that and show you that holiday weekend forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Octavia Hall County Supervisors have questions about the work done by the county engineer. County leaders voted to request an opinion from the state attorney general's office about the issue. Rules and regulations from the Mississippi Board of Licensure for, for, for Professional Engineers and Surveyors states a county engineer cannot review, approve, or recommend approval of his own plans or documents. The guidelines also state county engineers cannot review, approve, or recommend any plans prepared by any member of the firm of which he is a, mem is a member. Some county supervisors say that's exactly what's been happening with the work Clyde Pritchard has provided to the county for several years. Supervisors will now wait to hear back. The county reportedly paid Pritchard over $1 million last year. Octavia County deputies continue to investigate the death of Joyce Bostick. The 60-year-old woman's body was found last week at her home on Sykes Road. Deputies, they were originally called out to the home to check on Bostick. Now, the home, investigators say, was partially burned inside. Investigators say they're still piecing clues together in that homicide case. A person of interest does remain in custody on unrelated charges. Coroner Michael Hunt says a preliminary autopsy is not complete. West Point police continue looking for a killer, and they hope someone can help find that person. Investigators still haven't closed the book on the shooting death of Jamel Banks Sr. This happened last November. Banks was gunned down outside his mother's uh, Low Street home. 
Police Chief Avery Cook, he hopes someone will come forward with information. Now you can call in an anonymous tip to Golden Triangle Crime Stoppers, that number there on the bottom of your screen. Now there is a $5,000 reward for any information leading to an arrest. We definitely hope that they find uh, some something in that case. Switching gears, we're going to send things back over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Keith, it was just a beautiful night out there tonight. Been fantastic. The tomorrow and the next couple of days relatively cool we'll before the uh, summertime heat and humidity return. Just in time for the holiday weekend. Memorial Day weekend is upcoming. The unofficial start of summer pushing 90 pop-up showers and storms possible. We'll show you that 70 forecast since. First alert AccuWeather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. I hope you had a great weekend. Pretty warm and we had those storms yesterday. Today, not as active. A great evening in Columbus. Our time lapse from downtown. Looking back to the west, some of those fair weather clouds going away. They were going away. There they go. And there goes the sun. Uh, fantastic evening if you were out and about. We've nudged the rain over into Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas. There's an area of low pressure up here in Illinois. Look at that swirl up there. We'll show you the water vapor, and this really picks it out. That is the upper level low. What is that? It's just a cold pocket of air aloft. It's swirling. It will be coming on down. And what that's going to help do is to produce some extra cloud cover over the next couple of days. Also, some isolated showers. And as long as we're around this thing, slightly cooler than average temperatures, mainly in the 70s for tomorrow. And for Wednesday, a nice little change of pace. Our first alert forecast tonight, we've got kisses checking things out high above the yard on the rooftop. We start out in the upper 50s tomorrow, somewhere in the 70s, we think. Some of you could be a little bit cooler. Go to our website, WCPI.com. You'll see that page right there under the weather section. Submit your picture, your favorite animal, two-legged, four-legged, what have you. We'll try to get it on our air when we can in the morning and at night. Up here in Tishomingo County tomorrow, as we mentioned, there could be a few showers here near Iuka, Tishomingo, Belmont, more clouds as well. Some model data suggests you could stay in the mid and upper 60s. We'll just see how that all plays out. Farther south, the chance of rain is lower here in Knoxby County. Temperatures in the mid to upper 70s, most likely for our Tuesday. So a little bit cooler in the north country here, a little bit warmer farther south. That is typically the case, and that will be the case tomorrow. So we envision clouds to bubble on up during the heating of the day. That cold air aloft we talk about is hanging out just above the surface, and as the warm air rises, it will produce the clouds, maybe a few showers. That activity will go away tomorrow evening for the most part. Some clouds will hold on, though, and some of those clouds will linger into our day Wednesday. And once again, we may see some showers around our part of the world. But the heaviest rain, you want the flooding, you want all the active weather, that's going to be over here in the Carolinas. And look at some of these totals. It could be some significant rain over there. Tropical storm Arthur is pulling away from the east coast. Certainly good news. And look at this. This is a super typhoon, or uh, uh, this is a, a super cyclone, rather, in the uh, uh, areas just off India. That is a monster over there on the other side of the world at this time. But no active weather like that around here. Limited rain chances through Friday, Scott. I think we get back into the 80s starting Thursday. And there's your weekend, upper 80s to around 90. Scattered pop-up showers and storms just like summer. A new commander has taken over the Columbus Air Force Base in a change of command ceremony. Colonel Seth Graham was welcomed, welcomed as the new commander today. Graham comes from Whitman uh, Air Force Base in Missouri, where he served as a vice wing commander. Graham replaces Colonel Samantha Weeks. Members of the 14th Flying Training Wing were also at the ceremony to greet Graham. Welcome to Columbus. Well, Rebel Nation is mourning the loss of a legendary player. Tom has that story a little bit later in sports. You're watching WCBI News at 10 with Scott Martin. Welcome back, everyone. The month of May is Asthma Awareness Month. There are more than 3 million cases per year. That's according to the Mayo Clinic. We learn more in our Health Talk with Baptist. Hi. I'm Dr. Gaurav Dutta, part of the pulmonology team at Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. Tonight, I want to talk to you about asthma. Asthma is a chronic disease of the airways that makes breathing difficult. With asthma, there is inflammation of the air passages that results in a temporary narrowing of the airways that carry oxygen to the lungs. 
This results in asthma symptoms, including coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, and chest tightness. If it is severe, asthma can result in decreased activity and inability to talk. Even though there are many available treatments for asthma symptoms, untreated or undertreated asthma is still a serious, even dangerous disease that affects about 26 million Americans and causes nearly 2 million emergency room visits a year. There are three main features of asthma. One, airway obstruction. In people with asthma, allergy-causing substances, colds and respiratory viruses and environmental triggers make the bands of muscles surrounding the airways tighten and air cannot move freely. Less air causes a person to feel shorter breath. Two, inflammation. People with asthma have red and swollen bronchial tubes, which are thought to contribute greatly to the long-term damage that asthma can cause to the lungs. Three, airway irritability. The airways of people with asthma are extremely sensitive. The airways tend to overreact and narrow to triggers such as pollen, animal dander, or fumes. Join us next time for Health Talk with Baptist, where we talk about asthma symptoms and warning signs. Mail your topic suggestions to Health Talk at WCBI.com. Health Talk has been brought to you by Baptist Memorial Hospital Golden Triangle. Ole Miss football making moves on a Monday, changing up the schedule for the present and the future. More from Oxford next in sports. Sports with Tom Ebel. While the future of the 2020 college football season remains uncertain, changes coming to Ole Miss's season opener. Rebels opening weekend matchup against Baylor at NRG Stadium in Houston has been pushed back one day to Sunday, September 6th. Rivals' as Chase Parham was the first to report. And for those that love to look ahead, Lane Kiffin is going back to the West Coast. Ole Miss announcing a home and home series with the USC Trojans. Rebels going to Pasadena in 2025 and the Trojans coming to Oxford in 2026. Kiffin was the head coach of USC from 2010 to 2013. It'll be the first ever meeting between the two football programs. High school sports in Alabama and Mississippi could be opening back up two weeks from now. The Alabama High School Athletics Association announcing they're targeting June 8th as its date to resume summer workouts, but no competition will be allowed for the summer. The Mississippi High School Activities Association will meet this week to discuss whether they'll stick with the June 1st date as the targeted date for the opening of sports again in the Magnolia State. Here's a wonderful, wonderful sight for you. Golf being played at Old Waverly in West Point. The Bryan's brother, George and Wesley, hosting a junior clinic, as well as playing a round with some of the top junior golfers in the state. Oak Hill Academy golfers Cohen Trollio and Wells Williams playing 18 holes with the Bryan brothers, saying the event was worth the learning experience. It's been great playing with them and seeing how they go out there, go throughout their round and just learn from them. Of course, uh, Wesley's one on the PGA Tour, so you kind of see and watch how he carries himself, some of the shots he hits. Um, it's impressive. I think it's a really cool uh, example to see how not only how well junior golfers are playing these days, but also to have these guys uh, answering them questions and talk to them about how they their road to get to where they were. A sad Monday for the Ole Miss football family. Rebels legend gentle Ben Williams has passed away of natural causes. Williams joins James, James Reed in becoming the first African-American student athletes to sign football scholarships at Ole Miss. Williams going on to this day being the all-time leader in sacks and sacks in a single season at Ole Miss. Gentle Ben went on to have a 10-year NFL career, being named to the Pro Bowl in 1983. He was 65 years old. We'll be right back after the break. Relatively cool for your Tuesday and Wednesday. We're thinking more 70s than anything else. Lows in the 50s starting tonight, so pretty comfortable for the next few days. Limited rain chances, although we can't roll out a few isolated showers here Tuesday and Wednesday. Notice how warm we get as we get into your holiday weekend, Scott. We're back into the upper 80s, flirting with 90, lows in the 60s, some spotty summer storms. Summertime is here, pretty much. It is, sure Thanks, is. Keith. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great night. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.